Welcome, public inventors. This is a teardown of the ingenious Con Era 1875 hair dryer. It builds on the excellent video by Khan Academy on the same subject. I suggest that you watch that video first. It does a great job explaining the safety features of this hair dryer. One of the amazing things about these hair dryers is that with very few components, they draw about 15 amps at 110 volts or near the advertised 1875 watts while still using a tiny DC motor without burning it out. Yet they have no DC transformer. As the Khan Academy video explains, uh, the dryer uses a four diode full bridge rectifier to change the AC power into DC to drive the motor. However, there is no way you could drive this tiny motor at 110 volts without destroying it. Using a full bridge rectifier does not change the voltage. The Khan Academy video makes an offhand remark at 630 that the heater lowers the voltage, but it doesn't explain exactly where that happens. Many other videos on the internet show the main heating element in series with the motor, which could drop the voltage to 12 volts so that the motor could survive. However, if it did this, the total amperage would necessarily be limited by the amperage through the motor. Yet we know the amperage for the hair dryer is about 15 amps, and a small DC motor, no bigger than my thumb really, can't possibly sink that much current for very long. There are many videos on YouTube which show a circuit diagram for a hair dryer with the heating coil in series with the motor. I believe that these are either describing very weak hair dryers or are erroneous. In fact, the Conair 1875 hair dryer uses an ingenious trick that is not obvious to the naked eye, and I only discovered it when attempting to make a really precise circuit diagram of it for my own purpose. As part of a contract public invention is performing for NASA, I have some need to prototype a system with a heater, and using a cheap hair dryer heater is a fast hack for getting this done. With some tedious study, it became apparent that the nichrome heating wires wrapped around the core are electrically separated. In the windings, the wires alternate, one leg of the circuit on top of the other with each winding, although visually they look exactly the same. This gives us the two resistive elements that could be used as a voltage divider if they were wired in series and a tap was placed between them. But in fact, this is not the case. Working carefully, it becomes apparent that the two heating elements are wired in parallel, but that the motor is wired to only one of these legs. This is almost enough to explain the voltage drop on the motor we need. However, if you mistakenly assume that the two coils of resistive wire, which are exactly the same length and look the same to the naked eye, are of the same resistance, there would still be no way to get 15 amps out of the total system without putting much more than 3 amps through the motor. The shocking stroke of genius in this design is that they are not. Although they look the same, the main heater coil has a resistance of 10 ohms and the secondary heater coil has a resistance of 64 ohms. They must be using different formulations of wire. However, once we realize this and we draw and analyze a proper circuit, it all starts to make sense. The motor is a 15 ohm load in series with a 64 ohm load. Setting aside for now the fact that this is an AC circuit, a 78 ohm, 78 ohm load on 110 volts draws 1.41 amps on the leg with the motor. This is much more reasonable. Furthermore, 1.41 amps times 14 ohms produces 19.74 volts. This still seems a little high, but we have not taken into account the voltage drop caused by the other diodes in the system. So now we're in the ballpark. One thing that the Khan Academy video did not mention is how the low power setting works. It simply switches the circuit to use a large diode. That is, all of the current goes through a large diode. This means that the AC total power is cut in half. Only one half of the full sinusoid is used to power both the motor and the heater. Half of 19.74 volts, treated as a duty cycle, would be about 9.9 .9 volts, enough to power a 12 volt motor on the slow speed. Now, let us compute how much the total system can draw. We have effectively a parallel resistive circuit with one leg at 10 ohms and one leg at 78 ohms. Doing the math on this, that is uh, 340 divided by 39 ohms, giving us a total resistance for the parallel circuit of 8.72 ohms for a total current draw of 12.6 amps. This is a bit less than what the hairdryer claims to draw, but it's close. About 10.2 amps goes into the main heating leg and 1.4 amps goes into the motor leg. 
Note that that means 8.2 times more power will occur on the main circuit, or 1,254 watts, as compared to 153 watts. This second heating leg is in fact just a cheap, convenient, reliable way to lower the voltage on the motor.